Hey guys, welcome to this new segment of Coffee with Dante. I'm your host, Dante. And it is early in the morning, believe it or not. And uh, I wanted to, uh, there, there have been, I've been having some issues getting videos out. I mean, just a couple. Um, mainly because of energy and time, I just, I'm still working on stuff, I promise. But I wanted an avenue to talk about a bunch of the stuff that's coming out recently. Uh, one of them in particular was Star Wars uh, Rogue One. There was a new trailer that came out a couple days, at this point probably a week ago. And I really wanted to discuss about it. A lot of people asked me what I thought, and actually I didn't really have much, anything good to say about it. Um, and so I kind of wanted to, I wanted to have an avenue where, where it's a little bit more laid back. I can give you kind of an opinion about the trailer. Uh, or just anything in general. I'm looking at this as kind of like, you know, a venue to uh, probably have a conversation about what's coming out, where to go next, and just kind of an all-around general type of video that's laid back. So let's get started. I actually have six reasons why I do not like uh, this trailer to Rogue One. Now, to start off, this is just first impressions. There is a lot more that's going to be coming out. I don't know. I haven't seen the movie, but this is kind of the perception I got when I first saw it, and so I wasn't too psyched about it. So let's talk about the first one. Um, Cat Star Ever War! When I first saw this trailer, they showed the main chick, and she kind of, or the main lady, you know, the main girl or whatever, and she's like, uh, she's doing all these kick-ass things, and she's firing off lasers and whatever, and that's fine. But... I think the line that really got me, where I was just like, okay, I'm already disinterested in this character, was the little quote where um, they're like kind of going off the things she's done. She's like hijacked cars or whatever and stolen stuff. And she's just like, she's a rebel, you know? And, um, and then she makes the little line, she makes the kind of reply back and she says, well, what? I rebel. And it's this whole kind of attitude that I've had a really big problem with. It's just kind of like, yeah, look at me. I'm a badass girl. What are you going to do about it? I'm so different and special because of it. And the problem is with that is like the reason why Katniss Everdeen works is because as a character, she starts off as someone that puts the pressure on herself by sacrificing herself in place of her sister, right? So she's kind of a you know, burdened hero. She's kind of, in a sense, a tragic hero, kind of like, she doesn't want to be in the position she wants to be in, like she's in. Uh, and she has to kind of fight her way out of this. And then, you know, the entire story of Hunger Games is pretty much just that over and over again. And then she becomes a symbol of uh, the rebellion and then whatever. So, and then like, they want her to be a leader or whatever. And so, after that got big, you know, all the good stuff that the Hunger Games actually did do, which I think improved uh, image, like the image of women, that they can be tough. The problem is a lot of people misinterpreted that. And they're just like, well, she's just a badass chick, so I'm going to just put a badass chick in it, and um, people are going to watch it because she's a badass chick. And the problem with doing that is it doesn't make for an interesting character. The reason why Katniss works is because she is an interesting character. She builds up to that. And with this whole perspective, I mean, that's the problem with the Legion. That's the problem with City of Bones. That's the problem with even in a way, like, I think it's Maze Runner or Maze Trails or whatever. It's this idea that, oh, wow, I'm a badass dude or I'm a badass girl, you know, look at me kick ass. And that's okay if you want to go in that direction. But if you're going to go in that direction, it needs to not take itself seriously. Because you're already, I can't take the character seriously. And this is going to be a serious movie. And so, already that perception is bad. And I just got a really, really bad Im impression of the character. I really don't, I don't care for her anymore. Because I'm like, okay, how can I take her seriously? I mean, that line itself. This is a rebellion, isn't it? I rebel. <laughs> I don't know what to think. I don't know what to think. The man holding her down! So the second reason uh, I wasn't crazy about this trailer was like, right after we introduced this, you know, this superstar badass girl, um, you know, then they, then they have this guy and she's like, you're going to do it, right? 
And she's like, yeah, I guess I'll do it. And so they like kind of build this weird glass ceiling almost, this kind of symbolic glass ceiling. And, um, I mean, that's okay. I guess, you know, she's got to kind of beat the perception or something like that. And it just felt kind of forced almost. Um, and I, I don't know, man, it's, it was just kind of cheesy. I've seen this before and there are movies that do it a lot better. Um, I mean, a great example is Aaron Brockovich. I mean, no one took her seriously because half of the reason was because she was a woman and she proved everyone wrong. That's what makes the movie so great. It tackles that subject, uh, perfectly. But, you know, if I'm trying to, again, after hearing, you know, I rebel. It, it just felt kind of forced. And again, it doesn't really match the tone of what we just heard like five seconds later. Uh, another thing is the bad guy is this white dude who is like a Nazi. And it's already just pretty much saying white dudes are the bad guys. And whatever, I don't care about that. But it's just this continuing, it's this like really cheesy symbolism of the white dude is holding her down and she's got to kind of like go above the odds. And although it might not be intentional, um, that's kind of the perception I'm getting right now. And uh, this actually will go into my third topic, uh, why I wasn't crazy about this trailer. So let's get into that. Diversity quota, Matt. So the third topic is the diversity quota. And uh, right now there, you know, a lot of movies are trying to meet that diversity quota. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of activists right now uh, wanting to see uh, a more diverse cast. And so, you know, Disney's listening to them and I don't, I don't think a diverse cast is a bad thing. Um, in fact, I think you can make a movie stronger because of it. But the problem right now that's going on in Hollywood is that they're shoving it down our throat. They're kind of making it a selling point in fact. And it just feels, it, it just feels, uh, unearned. It feels, uh, just, I mean, you almost, they're trying to make you feel guilty. If you don't see this, you're a racist. And, you know, it's, it's one of those feelings. So they're shoving it down our throats saying that. And I'm okay with having a female lead. I'm okay with having a black lead, a Latin lead, whatever. But what is tending, what it seems like the trend is happening right now is like, okay, let's stick a black guy in here. And he's going to be kind of the brooding badass. And then let's stick in an Asian guy. He's going to do Asian things. And we'll have, you know, now a badass girl is like the thing. I rebel. So we're going to make her fight the man, the white man, because, you know, the white man's always got to be the bad guy. And um, it's just, it's like it, they're trying to meet a diversity quota. Uh, and they're trying to, but the way they're doing it and the way they're approaching it is completely wrong. You should write strong characters that just happen to be a different skin color, that just happen to be a different ethnicity. And that's kind of a big problem right now. Uh, in the film industry, is that you can you can meet the diversity quota, but you need to write strong characters. You can't be doing the generic, you know, stereotypical stuff over and over again. Especially the Asian guy with like the katana sword. Oh, it's just like, I mean, Hollywood just doesn't really care. Uh, they they'll try and tell you that oh, we're being so diverse, we're being so open. But the truth is, a lot of these big movies that are trying to meet that goal they're just doing the same stereotypical stuff that we've been seeing since like the seventies, the eighties, like nothing has changed. And the problem again, make good characters that just happen to be black. That just happen to be Asian. That just happen to be Latin. Uh, that just happen to be gay. Uh, let's get into the next reason. Deep symbolism. So the fifth reason, uh, wait, yeah, it's early. The fourth reason, uh, was the deep symbolism and they have the guy in all white showing the purity stuff and he's like walking through a battlefield and whatever and it just feels like I've seen this before you know it's symbolism is great but it felt kind of try hard in a sense like he's just like trying to be too deep um He's trying to like really just get the cinema files out there and just say, oh yeah, this movie's just going to blow my mind away. Oscars everywhere. Symbolism is great. I'm not like at a cinematography standpoint, as a storytelling standpoint, but 
the way they did it in this felt again cheesy. It felt kind of cheap. Uh, actually, the whole time when I first watched the trailer, I thought this was like an amateur filming it because a lot of the shots that they did were just kind of I've seen it before. Um, it was it just felt generic. The lighting felt off. Um, it, like some parts it felt really really dark and then others the contrast was up and it was just like this we like the editing was really strange in this uh and i wasn't crazy about that and that actually hurt the idea of the symbolism you know, again the movie isn't out i think it could be great i think at least they're trying to do something with that and so i at that standpoint i can recognize that but it also felt too try hard for me d-day with the walkers so the fifth reason is the d-day with the walkers and now the whole, <laughs> if you did not, if you, okay, watch that scene like three times, four times like I have. Each time I laughed out, I literally laughed out loud. It was the cheesiest thing. There were like three walkers and they're firing on this group of five people running across a beach and none of them got hit. It was, it was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It's like when you watch those action flicks and, you know, the main chick or whatever or the main dude they're fighting all these dudes or girls or whatever they're fighting these monsters and there's explosions everywhere and they have like the one cut and you know i want to see i want to see some realistic combat you know i want to see some some like i mean nobody's gonna make it you know like let's face it you know maybe one or two will it just it felt cheesy uh and you know the whole point with d-day was these were people sacrificing their lives and a lot of them didn't make it out you know a lot of them got creamed by German uh, machine guns. And it just was almost kind of, it was a little offensive in some ways. You know, there's a lot of great cinematic scenes showing D-Day. A lot of great TV shows that do it. And this just felt like a really piss poor bird. Questions! The last one that I have is questions. So like, they show her in this kind of imperial garb. And we don't really know if she joined their side or if she's like a spy or whatever. And, um, I think it's a strength, but also a weakness in a lot of these trailers, uh, mainly because like JJ Abrams, when the first Star Wars trailer came out, we didn't know anything about this new Star Wars. You know, we knew maybe one or two things like, oh, okay, well, there's going to be this random actress that no one's heard of and she's going to play a bit, huge role. Um, we're going to have this black guy that's going to be a clone trooper. How does that work? But it wasn't anything that really just, we were like, okay, you know, it, they were interesting questions. It played an important part in the story. And I'm not saying that this doesn't, I'm just saying this, this was the only question we had, you know, I felt like I've seen the movie already. Um, and if you don't already know the ending, they mentioned it in the original trilogy, what happens to these people. And I think that's kind of a problem with the movie itself. And it's not the movie itself, it's just the, the material they're, that they're dealing with. They're having to pretty much explain what happened to all... I mean, they all die. We all know that. So, it's not a problem with the movie, it's a problem with the context of it. And it's kind of unfortunate. But we don't really know what's going on with this girl. Um, there are rumors that she actually... she's There is like a, I think a legend story where a rebel spy actually turned to the empire because she was just so disenchanted with them and this story could be tackling that that would be kind of cool um and in that sense i would actually really look forward to the movie because that's creative that's interesting um it shows a side of star wars we've never really seen which is the empire you know not always being the bad guys that we always see them depicted as um but again, I don't think this story is going to take that direction. If it does, I'll be pleasantly surprised. But otherwise, the questions in the movie felt just kind of lame. I guess they also had the Darth Vader scene, too, which was kind of good. So, I mean, it was okay. It, it was okay. It wasn't a huge problem. It's very nitpicky of me, I know. But I felt like um, they could have done more. Anyways, guys, that's going to end this video. I hope you kind of get an idea of where I'm coming from. Um, I think um, it could be a cool movie, and um, I am looking forward to it. I will see it. 
Uh, definitely. I, I actually want this movie to succeed because Disney's actually putting a lot of bets that if this movie doesn't succeed, then the chances of them doing more side stories within the Star Wars universe will actually be less. They'll actually stop doing them. So I want this movie to be good but I'll and successful, but especially good because if you have a quality film, that only helps the Star Wars universe. And right now the Star Wars universe needs that. Uh, the prequels kind of hurt it a little bit. And so, obviously, The Force Awakens was a great movie. Um, and I think we need the quality back in this universe. It deserves it, uh, especially after the original trilogy was so high quality. You know, if, if you're going to make a sequel, they got to be good. And unfortunately, that's just kind of the curse, the gift and the curse of Star Wars. Everyone's going to go see your film, but everyone's going to criticize it. And um, unfortunately, today I'm one of those haters. Uh, but we'll just see. Anyways, guys, I will see you in the next video. Until then, keep drinking coffee or something.